Hi, everyone. So just to give you some background, um, Professor Nguyen created a really wonderful um, presentation at the request of the Office of Academic Affairs. Uh, it's my understanding it was actually Dr. Drago that actually um, requested that she um, uh, put together something about academic integrity because Professor Nguyen actually um, created alongside with um, a, another faculty, I believe it was Matt Moses, also a faculty in the English department, um, the first CUNY Academic Integrity Conference, and that was hosted at um, Hostos, actually, um, the inaugural, and it was really um, kind of a brainchild of hers, and I'm pretty sure it was Matt Moses as well. It was an excellent conference, um, really uh, talking about academic integrity and, and what it means, uh, you know, in, in this changing times. It was just excellent. I was an uh, attendee, and I, I really enjoyed it. So now we have this issue of academic integrity presenting itself in, in the most uncomfortable way here as we're moving forward and, and we faculty are not aware of, um, of really this, this business of being online and, uh, and the programs that we can use and the ways that we can use it and Blackboard and, and Wi-Fi and, and all these issues. Uh, so it was very timely, it was very prescient that she had uh, created this presentation. And I, I don't know about you, but I am certainly having, um, com I'm conflicted about um, academic integrity. So, um, and how to proceed about maintaining academic integrity. Hostos's reputation as a school uh, that prepares our students, um, uh, that, uh, you know, where employers can, can look back and say, oh, it's a Hostos students, okay, good. I know that they're getting the education. I know they're getting a strong education and a good education. Um, I'm conflicted as to how to maintain that reputation for hostels. And so this semester, um, I went really out of my way to, you know, to do all these things, to create all these quizzes and exams on Blackboard. I'm always so grateful for our ed tech department for being really wonderful and patient um, with me about um, how can I create um, exams online that, uh, you know, kind of straddle that that fence of um, so that I can say, okay, you know what? These are tests that are really uh, testing the students that are really, um, you know, they're not giveaways, they're not freebie tests, you know. Uh, meanwhile, being cognizant that our students do have challenges. I mean, they do have Wi-Fi issues. They do have, we all know that standardized testing and this business of being on a computer causes a lot of stress and anxiety for our students. And so for us in this, you know, new normal, the way that we keep calling it, how can we move forward um, still honoring our mission to give our students a, a, a strong, good education? How can we honor our commitment to the college um, that we as faculty uh, you know, respect this, this issue of the college's reputation, of the college's academic integrity, while still also helping our students um, as much as we can, which is really our number one goal. All right, so here we go. A few little tips, like I said, um, I really enjoyed the presentation, but I will not do it justice, of course, because um, I'm not trying. <laughs> All right, so um, Professor Nguyen started off the conversation. I don't know how many of you are aware of this um, researcher and um, speaker. His name is Dan Ariely. He's magnificent and wonderful. And he, he wrote a book, um, Predictably Rational, a few years ago. And uh, he's really a humorous guy, and uh, I read Predictably Rational. And what it talks about is how, how easily we deceive ourselves and how easily we think that we're such upstanding and moral people and how quickly that turns into us being able to judge other people because, you know, I'm such a great, fabulous person and I tell the truth all the time and I'm honest and, and all this business and you're not, right? And so uh, what Dan Ariely, he's got a quite a huge body of work for him. He's, I believe, a professor now at Duke University. And um, so he studied this, this, this business about, being, about us being liars and how honest we are and, and really interesting little experiments that he did. And so he hypothesized that we lie and act incor incorrigibly in a vast array of situations while still feeling that we are good people. Um, flexible cognitive psychology, which is a very humorous phrase in itself, right? Flexible cognitive psychology allows us to rationalize and even lie to ourselves. We're not bad apples. We're just, you know, um, uh, we're not liars. We're, we're just being more considerate of people's feelings, right? We are altruistic. We're protecting people. It's just a white lie. And honestly, everybody does it. I mean, you know, how the standards 
around me, by the standards around me, I'm a great person and I, you know, by all means. And this is the way that we can kind of uh, deceive ourselves. And I always, um, because I enjoyed this book so much and it, it really helped me understand myself. And I recommend you reading it, it's an easy read. Um, this was the first time that I really started reflecting on myself and being like, okay, you know, try not to judge other people so much because honestly, you're not Miss Perfect um, either yourself. And so uh, what will get people to be more moral, okay? So you as a professor, or even you yourself in your own life, um, if you recognize this about yourself or if you're willing to reflect upon this about yourself, um, what are the things that can help you uh, be more moral? So you can have some moral reminders, um, uh, you know, those of us that have things up in our, our house, whatever philosophy it is that you believe and, and the kind of person that you wanna be, you can uh, leave reminders for yourself everywhere about this. Um, uh, have some compassion and some forgiveness, allowing students. Um, uh, Professor Nguyen actually has studies um, that showed that uh, students were less likely to cheat if they were given certain opportunities, which I'm going to cover as I, as I move forward here. Um, as Professor uh, Jones also um, discovered about putting something in the syllabus about um, asking students to to really own this experience for themselves, because honestly, you know, and I say this to my students as well. It's like, you know, you'll you'll you're only cheating yourselves at the end. That's that's the final heartbreak with our students. And when we're talking about academic integrity, that in the end, they really are only cheating themselves. And it breaks our heart because we have all this fabulous information that we want to give them. Um, so let's go to the other one. So I'm not talking for too long. So um, as you're planning uh, for your uh, semester uh, and how you are going to uh, do the testing and what it is that you can require for your students, um, try and keep this information in mind. Students with lower self-management and organization abilities are more likely to cheat. This is according to uh, a study that Professor Nguyen found. And so the idea is, is that you want to try and address that in the student before you address the cheating. So the idea here is, is that if you can identify students or if you ask the students to self-identify um, and if they have lower self-management and organization abilities, then perhaps you can find a way to um, uh, craft assignments which will not ask students to be very you know, organizational. And so for example, for me, my students take their exam at 1130 on Friday morning you're only taking it once and that's the end of that. Okay, so I'm not really, um, uh, I'm not really considerate. And, I, and I'm saying this very honestly because uh, uh, the flip side of it is, is that our dental hygiene students do have to take a very competitive board exam and I really do need to prepare them for that experience. And so it's, it's kind of like I, a tough love kind of thing. I have to be this rigid with them because I need to prepare them for an exam, but it, depending on your coursework, you may not have to be so rigid with them. Students with higher time demands and workloads are more likely to cheat. And this is, you know, just something very obvious. I think for all of us, it's the same thing. If we have to take care of our families, if we have to go to work to feed our families, then of course, um, cheating and, and our own integrity kind of takes a backseat to that, which is a shame as well. Students who are high achievers, I was surprised to see that because you would think that high achievers would be uh, less likely to cheat because you know they're they're so devoted to their their coursework. But in fact, those students are the ones that will um, really go out of their way to get those high grades. So in other words, they are not valuing the education so much; they're valuing the grade more. And students in their first year of college, because um, as we know, uh, you know, going into college is kind of like a traumatic experience, and it's a, very different from their high school experience as well. Um, so. Uh, how many of these students cheat? Okay, these numbers are a little bit uh, frightening, so I, I will uh, warn you ahead of time. So in 1964, 75% uh, of students admitted to cheating. Um, I was just told that I need to wrap it up quickly, and so I will. So just take my word for it, a lot of students are cheating, <laughs> unfortunately. Okay, uh, so what can you do? Okay, have some fair and transparent assessment and grading methods. You want to really tell your students, you want to really go over with them how they are going to be assessed. Please have an honest dialogue with them about their academic work and let them know, let them own it, um, let them uh, understand the relevance of the education that they're receiving, or at least just have a conversation with them. It may be a lot to ask that you, um, you know, put this on them, motivate them in, in some way. 
Um, cognitive reminders before formal assignments, the students really appreciate this. I started doing this, even though it's more work for me, I let them know, okay, don't forget, on Friday you have your exam, or if an essay is due, then you know, a couple of weeks before time, say, okay, two weeks, your essay is due in two weeks, and that really um, helps them very much. And um, addressing some of those cognitive um, shortcuts, once again, communication and speaking to your students. So I do believe that Professor Nguyen will make this presentation available. I hope that she will. Um, she is a very giving person and um, so that you have access to the rest of it. Um, and if you are having uh, issues with um, uh, academic integrity, she's a very uh, open uh, professor, very willing to give you guys any tips on, uh, on how to prevent that in your courses. And good luck. <laughs>